Hi, Tim Sales here. In this series of videos, I'm talking about what prevents somebody from becoming a rep. This particular video I'm going to be talking about, they're not looking at reality. And this is the second in a series, but this particular one has to do with that the data on network marketing has completely changed over the last two years. Okay, so what's really changed over the last, say, two and a half to three years. It is that I have revealed so much and the, the person that could potentially um, being, being talked to and saying, you know, like, no, I'm not interested is because the person still does not know the facts, the truth about it. And so therefore they're not looking at current reality. Let me give you an example here. Uh, a long, long time ago, <laughs> it's a song, sorry, um, two years ago, people could say, few make money. They could say that back then and get away with it. And a lot of people did. And there's still old videos telling old reality. Most fail. People at the top make all the money. Utterly proven false. Utterly false. Okay and differentiation, all right? So that's the way that I was able to accomplish it. Um, and let me just explain something about differentiation here. Um, so, because it's a big picture, I want you to get. And there are, I'm gonna get two quarters here. Okay, so if I were to pick up two quarters and I were to show them to you, I could say, accurately that they're similar. Okay, so they have the same value, but they're similar in appearance. Okay, so one may be a little bit older, one may be this, this, this. Okay, so that's the reason I say similar, right? And what we're always trying to do, and that is getting at accuracy, is differentiation. And when somebody cannot differentiate, then they require the opinion of others. And normally when somebody is, you know, just like very precise and exact, um, they're, they're looking at the main data points. In other words, those points that show it, all right? So that's what I'm just going to very rapidly run through on each one of these. All right, so this particular one is, has to do with similarities, okay? So similar. What's similar about every product-based business? Well, every single one of them has raw resources. In other words, somebody with big earth-moving uh, equipment went and got sand and concrete and soil and oil and gold and diamonds and trees and animals and water, okay? And then they moved it into a manufacturing plant where they produced something out of it. It could have been a glass, it could have been vegetables, it could have been milk, cream, uh, meat, it could be yarn, it could be anything, okay? And they all from there went over into branding. All right, so that's where they put it in a box, a bottle, jar, right? They put a legal label on it. They had to get license if they had to. Packaging, countries, languages. Then it moved from there over into the warehouse. Pick, pack, ship to different countries. That's what they do there. And then it's going to go to, and here we get differences. Okay, it's different. It's going to a brick, an online store, a sales rep. Okay, and countries. So now we are dividing up a little bit, and but we're but they all have to do this in some sort of a fashion. All of them have to do it, okay? But it's just these are the differences. Okay, and the reason that network marketing chooses, or I chose, is that the highest margin in any of these categories is the person who owns the customer, and that's also the most security. And the reason that it's the most security is because any boss is going to, if things are bad, the last person they're going to let go is the sales rep because that's the only person who's exchanging 
the cash or the credit card between his company and the purchaser. And the sales rep's the one that's making that go down. It's happening, right? All right, so uh, that's that one. There's one other category called customer service, which is returns, complaints, restocking, and so forth. Over here, if I acquire the customer and I serve the customer, then I now own that customer. And that's what I want, all right? And that's what network marketing has. Okay, so completely, you know, like across all of the platforms, e-commerce, storefronts, network marketing, affiliate marketing, Amazon sellers, Shopify, you know, Etsy, any of them, they all had to go through this in some sort of a fashion, okay? And so what network marketing does is, is that we partner with all of these and we partner with this. And we are just going to acquire the customer. Next is the pipeline. Every single business on the planet has to generate a lead, contact the lead, show them a presentation. Sometimes like a doctor's office, a legal office, you know, anything like that, they're going to have to uh, set an appointment or maybe call a maitre d' or something at a restaurant. Uh, and then they're going to follow up. They're going to get a customer. They're going to serve the customer. They're going to make money. Get the picture. All right. So I talk about this quite a bit in all of my other videos. And so I'm just going to, uh, to move along. If this isn't just in business, this is everything in life. Okay, so if a church wants people in the congregation, they've got to do this. All right. This is the way that this lovely girl became my wife. Every person who has ever like gotten married had to do the pipeline. Okay. The secret, by the way, know what you're looking for. It's people who want it like you do. Do quantity so that you're not hungry, pushy, or trying to convince someone to join. Okay, so that's the secret. Let's compare it to real estate. All right, so uh, if you were to go to, let's say, Google, and you were to say the average income of a real estate agent in 2019, then they're going to pop out and they're going to tell you a number, and it's something like $48,000 $48, on average. But what they did is, is that they omitted up until this point right here. So they cut out 93% of the math. And that is the reason that no one really, that, that, that no one knew the true data. But before that test, they had to do a course and not everybody passed that course. And so that's the 97 that didn't. Okay. All of those steps were in it. You can look on my channel and find Network marketing versus real estate. And you can see my whole uh, breakdown of this. You compare the same starting number, the 710, because that's how we got our starting math. You take the same amount and you're going to see that 25,000 people in real estate will make that average. But in network marketing, $50,000, $53,000 people will make that, that amount, $50,000. And that's two times more people in network marketing will make $50,000 than in real estate. And so you can no longer say that most people fail unless you say, but it's twice better than real estate. Okay, there you go. All right, and so in terms of uh, other categories, you can look at them if you want to, 75,000. Um, it's 9,000 people here. It's 25,000 people here. $100,000 will make 11 times more people $100,000. Now, why in the world would network marketers make 11 times more people earning $100,000 than real estate? I questioned it myself. Here it is. Okay. So I want you to focus on something. This is be very, very valuable for you. And that is, is that what differentiates four income levels. So if 50,000 people passed the exam, but only 44% did that. All right. So somehow from 50,000 to 37,500, we lost 12,500 people in real estate. Why did we lose them? Well, they didn't sell at least one home. Why didn't they sell one home? I mean, they had all this training. Why didn't they sell one home? I'll get to that. And then you cut it down to 25,000 people made the average. 
and then you cut it down even more, okay? So you, you cut that better than half, that made $75,000. So what is the difference between the person who can make 48,000 but can't make 75,000? What's the difference between the person who can make 75,000 but can't figure out how to make 110,000? Okay, I'm gonna show you that. The average home in 2019 was 225,000. The commission on that is about $5,000, right? So if I sell one home, I'm gonna make about $5,000. So to sell one home, what do I do? Here is the pipeline. I'm going to have to generate a lead and that may be that I have an open house and or I put a sign in the yard or something, okay? I'm gonna to have to generate a lead, contact them, set an appointment to show the house. That's all that you would have to do, right? That's the thing you would have to do is to show the house. It could be shown on the internet. You can do all sorts of walkthroughs and in different camera angles. All these kind of things represent presentation. And then you're gonna follow up with them and then you're going to get them as a customer and you serve them. That is the only way that you can transition from this place to this place. So why didn't 12,500 achieve that? You can stare at that. You can go, oh, well, he didn't want it bad enough. Or you can do all kind of gibberish. But the actual fact is he did not put enough leads in front of the, the house. That's it. So evidently, this training didn't take him to that level or he, didn't up, he or she didn't apply it over here. And that's it. Okay. So what does it typically take? I just threw out a ballpark. I'm not in real estate. I'm in network marketing. And, but I threw out a ballpark and I bet you it's pretty close. $5,000 times 10. So if I had to, if I sold 10 homes, then I'd make $50,000 a year. So how many leads is that going to take? I ballparked it and said, I'm going to have to show that house to 10 people. Okay. 10 people in order to get one to say yes. So that would be 100 leads in order to get 10 across. 75, I'd have to push 150 leads across. To get 20, to sell 20, to make $100,000, I have to move 200 leads across the pipeline. Ballpark, dart with my eyes closed, throwing at it on these numbers. Somebody in real estate can correct me if I'm wrong. Now, I got to tell you, when I was first shown this by a data scientist, like I had asked this person and several others to acquire all this data and to break this down. And I said, I don't get it, man. I, <laughs> I'm having a hard time understanding why network marketers make 11 times more in the $100,000 category. I just couldn't make sense of it all. And I was like, do we have better people? No, that's not the case. Uh, do we have this? Do we have that? And it finally hit me. It finally hit me. And finally, I got it. I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> the real estate broker makes more money. Why? Well, because he's got agents doing the pipeline. Okay. And I was like, and most brokers don't have the number of agents that network marketers have. So network marketers are going to have teammates, reps, distributors, whatever you want to call them. But we have a whole lot more people doing the pipeline. And that is the reason why. Okay, so no one can now say that if you make money, uh, are the people, well, I'll, I'll talk about people at the top in a second. Okay, so not only in network marketing versus real estate, but also YouTube, 145 times more people will make $50,000. I'm just gonna hop through these. You can freeze if you want to. Um, in the actors, entertainers, and musicians category, 19 times more will make 50,000, 14 times will make $100,000. Versus Amazon sellers, 2.8 more will make $50,000, and two times more will make $100,000, but the business model is different, okay? So uh, you don't own the customer, and that is very important to me, right? And by the way, on real estate, one of the other factors is, is that in real estate, if you had to move 200 across the pipeline this year, you're going to have to move 200 across the pipeline next year. 
Or if you're in a much higher category, if you're making a million bucks, you got a lot of leads going across the pipeline. You got to do it every year. Yes, you can get higher and higher. The more, the better you get, you have a reputation and all of that stuff. You get referrals, all that stuff. I know. But what I'm talking about is, is that you're going to have to keep up in your game and you're going to have to do it every single year. In network marketing, if we have a consumable product and the, uh, the reps stay and keep on building and working, things like that, then we don't have to uh, repeat it every single year. It's residual. I had 18 years of six to seven figure income while I was completely retired. Well, for five years of it, I worked, but the rest of them, I didn't. Okay. All right. So it's a different business model, Amazon. And Amazon, uh, Amazon is doing this part and you are doing this part. Okay. So you're doing the manufacturing and the branding. You don't own your customer at Amazon. That's the biggest thing. That's the reason it's in red. It's a big, big deal because you have no stability right? Amazon does. They own the customer. That's the reason that Jeff Bezos is, uh, you know, by 2026 is targeted to hit the first, to become the first trillionaire. All right. Next category is pyramid scheme. Now, even though this gentleman changed his video, uh, I think it had to do with me, but he says, if it's shaped like a pyramid, it is a pyramid. And I said, no, no, that's not true at all, because in Navy SEAL team, uh, it's called G decentralized command. And the whole basis of it is that you are never able to control more than four people. Okay. And control meaning stay in communication with them. Can you imagine all of these shooters down here feeding information back up to the platoon leader? It'd be utter chaos. Imagine some guy in Washington, D.C. having all SEAL platoons, all shooters, feeding them information. You couldn't handle it. So they break those things down into four. All right. Four is typically in a wartime situation. You can sometimes stretch it out to having six people. But if you look at it, these are the squad leaders. And each of the squad leaders have four fire team leaders. And each fire team leader has four shooters. Okay, so it's obvious that that's the shape of a pyramid and um, the, uh, the gentleman, sorry, I went the wrong way. And the gentleman that said that is utterly a buffoon and he should get off television until he knows what he's talking about. You see, that is the area where most people get confused is they have a comedian who's trying to put out information and he doesn't know what he's talking about. Okay. All right. So the people at the top make all the money or the people who get in first or the people who get in early. I've heard all of that stuff. All right. So for those of you that don't know, I, uh, the first time that I was in network marketing, I worked there for five years. I got to $150,000 a month in income. And I think I came in in like the, I don't know, fifth or sixth year. Um, the next time I built, I was the first person to join the company. And, um, and so let me just walk you through the scenarios here. All right. So people at the top, top of what? All right. So I joined, I'm brand spanking new. I'm the first guy in the company. What am I on top of? I really need you to think that through until you ponder that. You cannot hit any sort of a, of like an understanding. Every business owner in any business starts most of the time from the stand, unless you come in and buy an already existing company. But the person standing there is going, all right, what do we make around here? What do we do around here? In other words, I need help. I'm going to run out of time or talent. One of those is going to happen and I'm going to have to hire employees or I'm going to bring them in and give them stock in exchange or I'm going to bring them in and give them a commission. That's the only three ways you really typically compensate somebody. So I'm bringing other people in. Are they in my downline, even if it's not a network marketing company? Yeah, they are. I'm sitting on the top of them. Who built them? I got them. I'm paying them a portion of what I earn. Okay. So same scenario here. 
is, is that everybody starts at the top of nothing. All right. So the way network marketing works, and I just kept, kept the same thing, but this is just two people here. And let's say that off of this, I make $50,000 and the payout is going to pay one, two levels. Okay. So I make $50,000 based upon the volume. Well, this is you here. You're sitting here. So, and if you build one, two, three, four lines and it has more volume in here, 250, then you make more money than me, even though you're in my organization. And so people who say, people at the top or people who get in uh, at the beginning and they say make most of the money, what are they looking at? These people who are, quote, at the top of what they built, what they're looking at at that point in time when they shoot a video and they say the people at the top are making most of the money, all they're really saying is, is a very obvious fact that these people haven't built anything under them. Come back 10 years later. Talk to them. Where are they? Well, they quit. Okay, they quit. Does it ever happen in business? Yeah, everybody. All right, find the person who's been around and say, hey, how did you do? All right, you can't stop something in time and say the people at the bottom are make, are, are, aren't making anything, All right? Because you have these mid-levels that are, you know, working and have been working. All right, and uh, I always find it interesting just to do this uh, is that nobody thinks that this is a pyramid, even though each level of a corporation earns less money. Right. And so that's really why the managers can tell the employees what to do. It's why the vice presidents can tell the managers what to do. In other words, it's the hierarchy and pay is the difference. So uh, each level earns less and they have a different compensation. Each one has a different compensation package. And then in network marketing, uh, all of us have the same compensation. So how could it not be fair? Traditional doesn't mean more fair. Okay, so uh, let me know what you think, all right? So those of you who have followed me for a while, have you recognized that things really have changed? Because I remember when I first started, like back in 1989, uh, and I would get these things that people would say, I didn't know how to handle them in then, right? And, uh, but utterly, because I did, I, I did all, all of the research, hired the data scientists and all these people in order to crunch all these numbers and, and all of that stuff, comparing the different industries, People can't say that stuff anymore. And so a lot of times your prospect, when you're talking to, they still have that old idea. And so you need to educate them, all right? And that's the secret to it. So what do you, tell me what you think. Have things changed? Um, how so for you, right? In your mind, how so for you? Thanks so much for watching.